Hey guys, today we are doing a spoiler free review of Kaiju Preservation Society, the newest release from John Scalzi. So Kaiju Preservation Society is set in 2020. In the throes of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is set in New York City and we follow Jamie, who is a delivery driver for a food delivery app. He's struggling financially, especially in the pandemic. On meeting an old acquaintance on a delivery, he is offered a chance at a job. This is a job that he's not told much about. He's purely told that it is working with large animals in an animal rights organization, and he jumps at the chance because there is not much work going in New York City in the middle of this pandemic, and he needs money. He needs money to keep his rental going, to have somewhere to live and have a way to eat. He is desperate at this point. Point. So he immediately goes and meets the person who is recruiting for this job and learns that this job is working on an alternate earth, working on an earth that is a parallel world to our own. It is an alternate dimension, essentially an alternate universe. And there, this earth has no humans and it is roamed by these ginormous creatures referred to as kaiju. Think Godzilla. Think Mothra, think all these massive monsters that we are used to in our fiction and in our fun action sci-fi films. That is the kind of thing we're talking about. We're talking about kaijus, we're talking about Godzilla, Pacific Rim equivalents. And that's kind of the setup for this story. It's only about 250 odd pages, so I'm not going to give you much more than that. That is the setup, that is what to expect. And as you might expect from a story about kaiju and an alternate world, it is very much a fun and fast paced ride. It is not a deep thinking, high concept science fiction story. It is a fun, exciting, not mindless, I was going to say mindless, but that's unfair. It's not mindless, but it is an up beat and a fun read. Now, in his author's notes, John Scalzi refers to this as a pop song, and I think that's a really good description. This is a story that is written because it is fun, because it is upbeat, because sometimes what we need is to stick the radio on and hear that song that makes us smile and tap our toes and just enjoy the fun of something. And that's something that science fiction doesn't always do. Sometimes it takes itself a bit too seriously. But here, this is a really, really fun pop song of a novel. Like I said, it's very short. It's a very quick read. It's just lots and lots of fun. And for me, this was exactly what I wanted at this point in time. This wasn't something that made me think too hard. The science is just about plausible enough that I can get on with the story without having to worry about it too much just about, um, but it's a, it's a good fun. And for me, it really reminds me of The Chronicles of St. Mary's by Jodie Taylor, if any of you have read any of that series. It's got that kind of secret organization doing something that the world doesn't really think is a thing. It has that sort of group dynamic where we are following a main character, our protagonist, but they are meeting other people in this team. They are building relationships and friendships in this organization that is doing something that the world at large doesn't know about. There is really fun research and biological stuff, scientific stuff going on with these kaiju as well. And it's just a really fun time. It is not the most twisty and turny. It is a little bit predictable in terms of its plot, but that doesn't matter to me at all. The first time you hear a pop song, you can guess where it's gonna go. You can guess where the middle eight is. You can guess we're coming back to course at the end. That's fine. That doesn't detract from it. It is doing what it is setting out to do. And that is how I would describe Kaiju Preservation Society. It sets out to be a fun and engaging and lighthearted science fiction, and it ticks all those boxes remarkably well. I don't think this is going to be a sci-fi story that I am thinking about forever. It's not going to be something that is going to be a brain worm for me and I just have to think it through all the time. But what it is going to be is something that I really, really enjoyed reading at the time and something that I would definitely recommend to friends and family who I know might enjoy this kind of light-hearted take on science fiction. My father-in-law and my sister-in-law love The Chronicles of St. Mary's and this will definitely be a present for them going forward. And I think they're going to really enjoy this similar take on an alternate world as to what The Chronicles of St. Mary's does for time travel. All in all, I think John Scalzi has absolutely nailed this. It was on my most anticipated releases list for a reason, because it just sounded fun. And that's exactly what it achieved. The prose is decent, the concept is good, it's lots of fun, 
all in all, I gave this four and a half stars. It was just a very, very fun read. And if you want a short and sweet sci-fi to slot in amongst some of these heavy, hard-going epics that you're reading, I would absolutely recommend this as a really good, fun read. I hope that's been interesting. I hope that's given you some thoughts on this very short book without spoiling anything. And if you want to see more of my content, there should be another video up here for you to go and check out. And I will see you guys again soon.